Yes, few days ago, the Dokolo Direction came to an end. And you, if you are, if you have been following my channel, I did a video talking about this by election, praying to God that this daughter of Sesi Ogwal should not be elected as the woman MP for Dokolo District, and it it came to pass. It, she was not elected, and for me, I think it is a win. For a very long time now, there has been family politics, where an incumbent MP dies and a daughter, wife, son is brought to take over from his guardian, his or guardian. And putting in, in, in consideration that the big, the, a big percentage of these people don't measure up to the standard. And normally people elect them with emotions. That's why 99% of those people who take over from their guardians don't make it back to parliament because they don't measure up to the standard. And putting in consideration that we are going, we, we, we are heading we are heading into a transition. There's a scheme of building Mohos uh, Rugaba as a preferred successor to his father. And if the, po the politics of family continues, it will, it will justify Mohos taking over from his father. In the, uh, the by-election which ended, put UPC's candidate in the lead. And the results were as follows. One. Adong Janet Rose, Elau NRM, got 14,001 vote. Angendo Harriet, NUP, got 727 votes. Aguti Sara, UPC, got 23,044 votes. Akulo Esther Obot, Independent, got 790. Alwoch Austin Ogwal Rosemary, got 8,168. He's the daughter of Sasuri Ogwal. And Amao Rebecca Independent got 439 votes. The total valid votes were 47,000. Those are the votes. So in this ep episode, I've come to dissect the Dokolo by election. What the result mean? What the NUP needs and ought to, uh, to do in the near future? But most importantly, the study materials we can learn from the politics of our nation. But before I do this, I want to let you know that if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you're watching this video from a different platform, please head on to YouTube. Type in Sula Mawagali. There's a lot of content of this nature. If your politics and economics is what you want, this will be definitely the right channel for you to subscribe to. So first of all, when you clearly see that the winner was the UPC candidate, in fact, all the by-elections which have taken place in the Lango sub region, at, have been taken over by the UPC headed by Akena. It is a sign that UPC still has a stronghold. Normally, every party has a stronghold. In Uganda, there is NUP. In the Lango sub region, there is UPC. And Akena have done a great job by mobilizing the people from the Lango sub region. In fact, I keep on telling people that Lango sub region is opposition. Just that the opposition honchos have not come out to galvanize the masses so that they can stand up for General Kaguta Museveni. In fact, it is General Museveni going in Lango sub region, trying to bring it in NRM by appointing the wife of Akena, um, um, Betty Among, as the minister. And I, I keep on telling people that this is unconstitutional because you cannot be in a parliament where a UPC MP is under opposition cabinet list and another UPC MP is in the government cabinet list because we all know opposition has a cabinet within parliament. So you end up UPC sitting on both devices of parliament. It is unconstitutional and I wonder why these MPs don't take it to the constitutional court. But that will be for another day. First of all, this message goes to the NUP. NUP is the biggest opposition party. But one of the weaknesses of, of the NUP, it doesn't know how to play regional politics. And remember, like it or not, Uganda is regional, Uganda is tribal. Sometimes you must play regional politics to get certain results. This is where General Seven has an upper hand. You appointed um, among as a minister so that he can get a soft spot for the UPC. What the NUP ought to have done, maybe, is to give support to the UPC candidate. In this way, Bob Wayne could also get some support in the Lango sub region. Oh, in the next election, the constituents which are already taken by the UPC, NUP should not put their candidate. And the constitution which are taken by the NRM, NUP can compete with the UPC to see who is going to take these constituencies. 
In this way, Bob Wine will get the support of the Lango sub region and the MPs of the of, of UPC, but also to eject Yuri Kaguta himself in the region. Because I know UPC is a stronghold of opposition, just that they are not well galvanized. For example, when you look at the 2021 general election, putting all matters constant, I know the election was of course stolen. There was very many irregularities during this election. But when you look at the elections in the Dokolo district, you clearly see that Bob Wayne got a lot of votes. In fact, when you clearly see Yori Kaguta Museveni got 36,774 votes. National Entry Platform got 15,364 votes. Patrick Amuro got 2,500 Katumba, Kabuleta, Tumukunda, and others. But you will clearly see that Bobby Wayne was the second with 15,000 votes. And remember, in the 2021 election, and remember, during this by-election, the NUP candidate didn't get these votes. That means the Lango sub region is an opposition. It is incumbent upon the NUP administration to see how can they steal away UPC. Because right now, UPC is leaning towards NRA because of what Genome 7 is trying to do. He has always come out to say that they are working closely with the UPC. So it is incumbent upon the NUP leadership to go and talk with the Lango, with the UPC, to see how they can build synergies to put Museven out before it is too late, too late because Genome 7 is building towards getting UPC. Secondly, I think one of, of the main reasons I think even UPC came out as a victor is because they have a soft spot with the NRM. NRM normally cheats election. You all remember during the election of Charles Semura's son, Akena had to fight with the NRM goons who were going to steal election. So by UPC leaning towards the NRM, they, 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 it can be among the reasons as to why they left it to win this election. That's why when other by-elections are in Uganda, you see police, military, and they make it hard for the opposition to win, even though they have a lot of votes. A clear example was the Kayunga by-election, where NUP was stolen. Where the NRM government stole an election. So, one, the second reason for the UPC win is because NRM never wanted to cheat. Because they are kindly working together. But for me, I pray that the NUP should also move in so that it can take UPC away from the NRM. In this way, we can also get a huge base from the Lango sub region, which is predominantly opposition, like it or not. Of course, that's my opinion. Do drop me your comments by commenting about this. Thank you very much for listening in. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, I employ you to subscribe, like, and comment so that I can be motivated to do more of, of such videos. I'll see you on another one. Peace.